Yes guys and welcome back guys to a brand new video guys on my channel guys and yes guys I am going to be talking about Manchester United's last game that we went and played Bournemouth guys away from home at the Vitality Stadium where we saw Manchester United draw this game 2-2 in a game where I think we got lucky yet again not a convincing or promising performance by Manchester United not good enough from United we didn't turn up just living off moments yet again relying on individual brilliance lucky to get a point be winning really and not good enough at the end of the day but Anyway, guys, let's get into today's video announcement. It was an unchanged team for last game against Liverpool. Talking about the start 11, so we started with Aragnana, Dallo, Quambal, and Maguire, Wambasaka. Casemiro Romain, Nacho, Fernandez, Rashford and Hoyland. Get into the other reaction now. Fernandez double and we're sleepwalking. Fucking wake up. Lucky to get a point. The performance wasn't promising or convincing. Relying on individual brilliance. Lacked effort, desire and aggression. We didn't turn up. It's not good enough. It's embarrassing. Unacceptable. It's disappointing, annoying and frustrating. It was an okay start. United trying to exploit the left hand side. Bob of pressing without possession. United dominated possession early door. United trying to play it out from the back. Bob of have come close twice. United trying to get a foot a hold of the game. Both teams working each other out. Every touch from Ganacho. Bob of capitalised on score for 1 0. United got to show a reaction and response. Rashford had a shot but off target. Sinistero had a chance wide. United just not settled since Bob of scored. Bob of playing well. Christie had a chance over the bar. United just looked clueless going forward. United moving the ball too slow. Christie had another chance save. And that's a goal near the end. Work it well and equalise 1 1. That's showing a bit more fight and a determination. Lovely ball to Otara had a chance just wide. Bournemouth show a great response. Lack of communication. Clive up scores for 2 1. Sinistera goes off injured. Rayola makes a change. Kirkes had two chances. One off the bar, then over the bar. United's defence looked vulnerable. Every time Bournemouth come on the front foot, they look like scoring and they look dangerous for the Puts a curly cross in, keeper has it comfortably. Driver has space and time, great chance saved by Ronaldo. Maguire had a chance, so Fernandez had a chance, hits the crossbar. First half was dropped. United got to regroup, go again, we got to do better, got to start greater chances, got to expect a reaction from response. When we get our chances, we got to take them, pick up the intensity and tempo, bring more energy and intent. United has just got to keep hold of possession better. United got to kill off the game as soon as they can. Ten Hag makes a personal change, okay, stuff. Fernandez had a chance from D. Distance. Bournemouth appealing for a handball. Bournemouth on the front foot, a good ball to Rashford, just couldn't find a good run from Cliver, good block by Wambasaka. United having a bit of possession on the front foot. United win a penalty, Fernandez scores for 2 2. United just needs to concentrate and focus, defensively be switched up. Wayola makes two substitutions, Wayola makes another change, Ten Hag makes a substitution. United need to push and go for it. Bournemouth just lacking that spark in the final third. Aaron's has a chance wide, Bournemouth and Nack. United tried to get on the front foot, I might have had a chance wide. Game management decision making. Was fired. So, Toothless going forward, couldn't get into the game, needed more from the players. It is what it is, onwards and onwards, we move on. First half was dropped, second half was lacklustre. Overall, not good enough performance. Anyway, guys, let's get straight to today's video right now. What did I make of the performance? The performance was an awful, embarrassing, abysmal performance from Manchester United. I think it was not good enough as well from Manchester United as well. In a game where Bournemouth absolutely dominated us. This is a game last season that we won 1-0. And we've gone to Bournemouth with our chests out and gone low. We know this is a must-win game. And even coming into this game against Bournemouth was a must-win. I think maybe two points dropped from it. I know Bournemouth are a bit of a, a tricky side, a tough side to play against nowadays. But the bigger teams always do fire the way. Once these sort of teams like your Bournemouth, some lovely play well against Manchester United. They turn it up. It's their FA Cup final. We knew it would be their FA Cup final against us. To be honest with you, yes, we relied on individual brilliance. Fernandez gets out of the shit. I think Fernandez this season's took a lot of criticism. And I think our sort of fans need to say, look, some of our players in that game were not good enough. Some individual performance that were not good enough as well. And where could you be without your captain Bruno Fernandez scoring a brace as well in this game? But to be honest with you, I think we're sleepwalking this way at the minute. Players are sleepwalking this running, no wins in four in the Premier League. I think we've only took about three points from four games or something like that. It's something that's not been good enough as well. We just need to fucking wake up and we need to just sort of press the reset button and go again because we need to have a strong end to the season. You've got Newcastle, you've got us, you've got Chelsea that are right behind us that are pushing for Europe as well. We need to wake up at the minute as well because we need to have a, a week now against Sheffield and Burnley and take all six points from that. Hopefully we can just build on it then from then to the end of the season as well. But to be honest, in this game, I thought we were lucky to get a point. 
Uh, I thought the performance was not convincing at all, promising. Um, another uh, sharp performance from United, uh, just not been good enough yet again in this performance. And again, where United got absolutely dominated and absolutely battered in against the team in Bournemouth. I know they're a tricky team, I know they're a tough team to play against. But team, but we've got to be doing miles better at it. I know we're hit been hit with injuries, but the players on the pitch should be doing a lot more better. And uh, obviously, you get your ten hour out is saying get him out. He's not good enough. But um, we're relying on individual brains yet again, and uh, just simply not good enough. And we didn't turn up. And uh, it's embarrassing. It's unacceptable. It's awful. It's uh, abysmal. And. Uh, just not good enough, and it's disappointed, annoyed, and frustrated, and a bit like it's a bit like Brentford all over again, and uh, you know lacking effort, desire, and aggression, and uh, you know people may blame, people can blame Ten Hag all they like, but the players have got to take responsibility as well for their actions on the pitch as well. So it's just been simply not been good enough from yet again from Manchester United. I think we can sleep well this and get away with this, but we've got to wake up and smell the coffee because. We need to have a good run it now, and uh, it's important to pick up these points and uh, accumulate these points from now to the end of the season. Anyway, guys, let's get into, anyway, guys, let's get straight to the game now. I thought it was an okay start by Manchester United. United early doors on the front foot were trying to make the point on the left hand side. You know, Bournemouth were really pressing. I think you know you could see the way how they were set up, Bournemouth. And the style of play that I also said uh, in my last video coming into this game as well. And uh, they're an awkward team to sort of play against nowadays because without possession, they go in pressure. And uh, United were dominating possession early doors. Uh, United tried to play out from the back as well, as you could see in the game as well. And Bournemouth sort of came close twice early doors as well in the game. You know, United were trying to get a foothold in the game. Both teams were sort of trying to work each other out. And then uh, it was a sort of a bit of a, a heavy touch from Ganacho. It was a mistake at, also at the back as well. And uh, Bournemouth capitalised and scored for 1 0. Then it was all about we had to show a response and a reaction. Um, how could we come back from that? Rashford had a shot, but it was off target. Sinister had a chance wide. United just had, uh, could not settle since Bournemouth had scored. And, uh, you know, Bournemouth were playing well in the game. Uh, so much better than us. Christie had a chance over the bar. United just looked clueless going forward, just lacking ideas going forward yet again. You know, United were moving the ball far too slow on the ball yet again, just uh, moving it far too slow. You know, just nothing about us. Uh, you know, we're, you know, just nothing about us not moving that ball quick enough. Christie had another chance wide, uh, while it was saved actually, and then United go on the. Uh, Go on the other end, work it well, and get an equaliser for one-one. And then, uh, you know, United sort of in the game when we got it back to one-one, we were showing a bit of fight and a t determination when we were on the front foot. Lovely, lovely ball to Otara had a chance just wide. Bournemouth uh, showed a good response after the equal uh, after they conceded as well. Lack of communication from United as well, and shit defending as well. Clive up scores for two-one. Sinistera goes off injured, so they were forced to make a change. Kirk has looked really sharp in that game as well. And he had two chances, one off the bar and one over the bar. One uh, off the crossbar, one went over the bar. United defensively just looked rummable as well. Every time Bournemouth looked like going forward, they would just look dangerous, looked like scoring as well. Fadadez had a curling cross in and the keeper had it comfortably. Cliver, had time and space, great chance by a, a great chance and saved by Arnana. Maguire had a chance over as well. Fernandez had a chance and hit the crossbar. Thought the first half was dross. Then it was all about we had to regroup, go again. We had to do miles better than that. Uh, we had to start creating chances. We had to expect more uh, a reaction and response from Bournemouth because they want to try to kill the game off. And then we had to, you know. When we get our chances, we've got a tail and pick up the intensity and tempo, be more energy and intent. United need to keep hold of possession better, try to kill the game off as early as we can as well. Uh, Tenard makes a personal change. Um, you know, I think Bournemouth just really suffocated 
Ganacho and looked knackered, so he had to take Ganacho off and Abba come on. At least he got given a chance. It was an okay start. Stupidly, Fernandez had a chance from distance. Don't know why he's doing it. Obviously, the goalkeeper came off his line. You know, Bournemouth appealing for a handball. I think the referee did made the right decision. Bournemouth on the front foot started the second half the way Aldi start Aldi finished the first half. A good ball to Rashford just couldn't really find him. Good run from Cliver, good block by Wamba Saka. You know, United having a bit of possession on the front foot and uh, then United win a penalty. Fernandez scored for 2 2. Then it was all about we had to concentrate and focus. Um, defensively, be switched on. Rayola made two, uh, two substitutions. Then he made another sub. Ten Hag made a substitution. United needed to push and go on for the winner. And uh, Bournemouth were just getting knackered and they were lacking that sort of that spark in the final third and lacking that final pass in the final third as well and then Aaron's had a chance wide and uh, United trying to get on the front foot Ahmad had a chance wide as well but what is really disappointing about Manchester United is we didn't go for it right at the end and just settling for a draw and it's just embarrassing settling for a draw against a team like Bournemouth as well so yeah, not good enough from United, but game management decision making was vital. And um just couldn't get into the game, lacking ideas going forward, two plus going forward. And we needed more from the players and uh, it's just not good enough and it is what it is, onwards and upwards. We move on, points dropped, I think. You're trying to put the pressure onto the teams in front of you, but we're just nowhere near good enough at this stage as well. Overall, in the end, not good enough. We never really in the game, really, just living off moments again. We lack creativity from start to finish. We didn't take enough risks in the game, didn't go for it at the end. And that's now no wins in four games. It's just simply not acceptable. Exactly, it's just not good enough at United standard, to be honest with you. We've got to be taking responsibility. You can blame Ten Hag for the substitutions, game plan, tactic. Blame Ten Hag all you like, but players have got to take responsibility, unfortunately. They've got to take accountability for their performance. At the end of the day, Ten Hag still putting out 11 players out on the pit. We're never really in the game, to be honest with you. We're living off moments, individual brilliance. Got us a draw, lacking creativity, so lacklustre as well in the game. Just never really in it, and Bournemouth absolutely dominated us and absolutely probably deserved to win the game. Luckily, didn't get that penalty at the end as well, but just didn't take enough risks in the game and didn't create enough chances and didn't go for it at the end, and it's so disappointing just not showing that purpose about us, that conviction and that ruthlessness about us to go and say, look, we're at 2-2 here, put yourselves back into the game, you've got that penalty, let's kick on and let's go and push for a third and let's go and win this game against Bournemouth, sitting back deep and they're trying to take a draw from Bournemouth, maybe could be a tough place to go and under, a tricky team to play against, yes it can be tough at times, but Villa have just beaten just yesterday as well, so you can't just say, let's just take a point here and now we'll move forward, you have to maximise these games out and look where we were in that game, we got that penalty in like the 65th minute, we had 25 minutes to go and kill that game off and get a third goal. It's all down what we did. The performance was not good enough. It was just another shit performance on United. Wasn't convincing, wasn't promising. Living off moment. Individual brilliance got us a draw. It's just simply not good enough for Manchester United. We just need to wake up, smell the coffee. We're practically sleepwalking this running at the minute. We need to wake up at this minute because there's a chance for us to obviously force ourselves into the top six. And then you've got Chelsea behind us. You've got Newcastle in front of us. We need something out of these next two games now. Again, Sheffield United and Burt. Just simply not good enough for Manchester Manchester United have got to be bad. We know that these performances have not been good enough this season, but we're just repeating ourselves week in and week out, and it's just not good enough. Is it a point gained or two points dropped? I mean, I know it's a tough place to go, but Bournemouth, over the years, United have gone to Bournemouth and won, easily won there at the end of the day. I know things have just come clicking for Bournemouth. Things have sort of coming together now for Bournemouth. He's implemented his style of playing now. Nadine Raya, it was a tough game. It wasn't easy for us and living off moments, living off individual brilliance. But for me, I think it's two points dropped when you're trying to really force yourself into the top six at the moment and try and hunt for top four if we can. But those chances are looking slimmer now for top four. We're sleepwalking but at the same time it could be a point game I think it's two points dropped beating teams like Bournemouth at the end of the day they must win we're just sleepwalking and we just need to wake up maximise every single game and pick up the three points in every single game Bournemouth didn't get given a penalty towards the end of the game and United got a penalty for handball did the referee and VAR make the right decisions I think they did 
I think they've got them absolutely spot on, to be honest with you. Bournemouth had tried to call for two penalties. First one was on Maguire. I thought that was ball to hand. That was not a penalty. I think the penalty incident with us, I think it was sort of one of them where he's hit his hand and then the ball's just sort of like changed direction because Adam Smith sort of moved his arm in a way and I think that was why it was given as a handball. People may say it's soft, but nowadays you just don't know what's a penalty. We've had three big penalty decisions, soft ones, dodgy ones that have got the other way at the end of the day i think that he made the right decisions yeah they could have won it right at the end on the penalty as well luckily got the right decision the contact was outside the box thought VAR, the referee made the right decisions in this game for once as well who is my man of the match to be honest with you i don't think many players had a great game in this one anana had an okay game dallo was okay van barlo maguire not good enough wan Saka did okay casemiro wasn't good enough as well mayna tried as well ganacho just was knackered fernando did good because he dragged us in that game to help the team along rashford just same old same old all this season and hoyland just missing as well for me i think it's got to be bruno fernandez got us the point lucky to get a point i think it's got to be bruno fernandez definitely for sure how do we beat sheffield united look now we've got sheffield united now in our next fixture now look this is a must win for manchester united you know, there's no doubt about that. Look, Sheffield United have only got three wins this season. They've not been good enough as well this season. Sheffield United, they had Paul Hagenbottom at the start of the season. They started decided to uh, part ways with him. You know, then they've tried to bring in um, Chris Wilder, a manager that they know that's been there before and done it before. You know, it's not gone to plan for Sheffield United. They've really struggled coming back into the Premier League. You know, three wins all season long. Uh, defensively vulnerable, conceded 88 goals. Three wins all season. Yes, they've got injuries as well, but, you know, they've just been massively inconsistent this season. I think Sheffield United, uh, very... <clears throat> you just don't know what you're going to get from them as well this season. Bottom of the Premier League, so you'd be thinking, right, this is a must win for Manchester United. We can't afford to lose this. Uh, must win for Manchester United. We can't afford to... Have another setback here against Sheffield United. And, um, you know, United have just come off the back of the FA Cup win. So, in a game where we've just sneaked through. So, uh, you know, United have just have to take a bit of confidence from that game coming into this one against Sheffield United. So, is it going to be a tough game? Could be. Sheffield United, you know, are going to give it everything that they've got with their FA Cup final. Uh, they'll look to play a low block and um, you know so it's all down to what how they play and it's all down to how we play as well so United have just got to uh, rest recover um, after uh, Sunday against Coventry and um, and just go again against Sheffield United we're probably gonna we probably need to rotate the squad a little bit considering that we've got a very depleted squad at this moment in stage and we're struggling with injuries, so we're going to have to find a way uh, to win against Sheffield United here. So, um, Sheffield United not having a great season. Looking like they're going to get relegated sometime soon in the Premier League. So, uh, this Sheffield United team are there for the taking. Uh, they make far too many mistakes. So, um, it's all down to what Manchester United do. We've got to mentally prepare off this game. Got to go with the right mindset, the right mentality. Physically, I think we'll be worn out after that game against Coventry. So we're going to have to try find a way to win against Sheffield United. I think they're going to try and make it tough for us. So it's all down to United of what we do in and out possession. We have to play to our principles. Our uh, we have to play to our principles and our game plan and how we approach this game as well. So we have to go with a winners mentality. We've got to win this game. We've got to get the three points here against Sheffield United. There's no doubt about that. So they're a very good team, Sheffield United. We have to turn up to this game and get the job done here against Sheffield United. So they're a very good team on the day. And, um, you know, we've got to get at this Sheffield United team. They're very vulnerable and um, make far too many mistakes. So we have to get at them. Conceded 88 goals this season. Uh, conceded over 50 or goal, uh, conceded about probably about 50 goals at home. So... You know, this is a very um, this is a very inconsistent team, a very um, uh, a team, uh, probably a poor Sheffield United team that I've probably seen in a long time as well. So United, I've got to do the job here against Sheffield United. 
definitely without a doubt. So yeah, you know that direct football is the go-to style at Sheffield United this season. So veering away from that incredibly doubtful for numerous underlying reasons. Long passing is already a heavy feature of their tactics, making 42.33 long passes per 90, the third highest rate in the EPL. The 3-5-2 has been the most frequent used, appearing 25% of the time in the EPL this season. A 5-3-2 a being used 14% of the time, a 4-3-3 11% and 4-4-2 10% and a cluster of the shapes along the way. This pattern has continued in Wilder's range so far, having used a 4-1-4-1 versus Chelsea and a 4-2-3-1 versus Brentford and a 4-3-3 versus Liverpool. Sheffield United, though the defensively vulnerable, conceded 88 goals, three wins all season, got injuries, the inconsistent will be there for the taking as well, not scoring many goals as well, only about 30 goals, or 30, over 30 goals scored this season as well. They'll play with a low block, low on confidence. It'll be their FA Cup final. They'll give it ever. They'll give it everything that they've got. They'll make the right decisions going forward. They'll take risks. Get get try to get on the counter attack. Bring energy, high intensity, high tempo. Want to be aggressive. Try to be relentless, rampant. Try to get on the run of play. Well organized, well drilled. Make runs in from behind. Keep it tight and compact. Defensively frustrate us. But United though are going to have to defend properly. Defensively need to be organised, need to keep it tight and compact, defensively frustrate them, need to be ruthless, relentless, aggressive, high intensity, high tempo, play for energy, create the chances, take the chances, need to be clinical, get the crosses into the box, drive them out of position, be brave, take risks, set pieces could come into play, we need to play with width, get between the lines, we've got to close them down, don't let them, get, get, don't let them back in the game, don't leave any spaces open, they'll show, they'll, clean, they'll, show, they'll show incredible team spirit, capture and fight, we have to do the basics right, game management and decision making will be vital. Got to get tight, don't let them get back, don't let them get a shot off, sustain your attacks, do your basics, win your 50 50s, win your second balls, win your duels, pull, pull them on the back foot, keep possession, full backs have got to be effective, force them to make mistakes, put them under pressure, don't let wingers cut back inside, don't afford to make mistakes, make the runs in from behind, don't get pulled out of position, be explosive, keep McBurney, Archer. And Brenton Diaz quiet. Getting to the goals now. First goal, Hoyland passed the ball to Ganacho. Ganacho tries to find Fernando. Blocked by Bournemouth. Rashford passed it to Ganacho. Ganacho makes a run in from behind. Finds Fernandez and Fernandez scores for 1 1. Second goal, United win a penalty. Fernandez steps up and scores the penalty for 2 2. Getting to the stats now. Possession for Bournemouth, it was 43%. For my United, it was 57%. Also, Bournemouth, it was 2. For my United, it was 2. Little shots of Bournemouth, it was 20. For my United, it was 8. Shots on target for Bournemouth, it was 5. For my United, it was to accuracy for Bournemouth it was 25% for my United it was 25% and Cellar Box of Bournemouth it was 12 and for my United it was 5 Shots out Cellar Box of Bournemouth it was 8 and for my United it was 3 total passes for Bournemouth it was 382 passes and for my United it was 528 passes the shot accuracy for Bournemouth it was 75.1% and for my United it was 81.8% getting to the substitutions now Ganacho went off a Diallo talk about Alejandro's performance his 30th excessive start and the workload took its top had no joy in the first half and was substituted for Amazon at the pause, mainly went off a mount to talk about Kirby's performance. One of the few respectable performers, patience on the ball played. Dividends when his deflected shot was handled by Adam Smith inside his own area. Next up, we've got Sheffield United. Sheffield United are 20th in the league. Look, this is going to be a big game, not only just for Sheffield United, but for Manchester United as well. This is our game in hand as well on Sheffield United. This is the match day where both Tottenham and for Aston Villa drop point. We win this, we go above Newcastle as well. This is must three points for Manchester United, there's no doubt about that. We've got to come into this game, we might have a bit of confidence on our back after that FA Cup win as well, now that we're going back to Wembley against Man City. One of those games, again, wasn't a great performance against Coventry. A little celebration as the performance was not good for 60 minutes of that game as well. At the end of the day against Sheffield, look, this is going to be a big game. Sheffield are going to come into this game thinking, we want to get back to winning ways. We've lost the Burnley 4-1. They're having a tough season. They're having a difficult season. Sheffield United only got three wins all season long. This is a team where you look at them and go, look, the defensive very vulnerable. Conceded 88 goals. Three wins all season. Dealing with some injuries as well. They're inconsistent. This is a 
a Sheffield United team that will be there for the take. I think they've only scored about 33 goals this season. They'll look to play with a low block, inconsistent, low on confidence as well. They'll look to try to give this everything. They'll try to make the right decisions going forward. They'll want to take risks. They'll want to try to create chances. Get them on the counter attack. They'll look to bring the energy, the high intensity, the high tempo. Want to be aggressive as well, relentless. Try to be rampant. Try to get us on the run of play. I think they'll be well organised, well drilled, and they'll try to make the runs in from behind. It'll be one of those games where when they get the chances, they'll want to try and take them. They'll be clinical in front of goal. Keep it tight, compact defensively, and try and frustrate us. So United have got to come into this game with our chests out and say, look, a chance here to get three points on Sheffield United here. A chance to do the double as well. Be a tough game for Manchester United. I think it could be a tough game, it could be competitive as well, they'll try to make it competitive Sheffield United, so United have got to have to stay mentally switched on at all times, have to stay focused, stay concentrated at all times. I think it starts defensively for Manchester United as well, we defensively need to organise, keep it tight, compact, defensively frustrated. It's what we do in and out possession, I think when we have possession we need to try to play to our principles, play with initiative on the front foot, be proactive, aggressive, relentless, ruthless, high intensity, high tempo, play with energy. When we get our chances, we've got to take our chances and we need to be clinical. Server is going to be sharp in front of goal. We'll take the chances and got to show that composure as well. The Sheffield side have got a lot of mistakes in them. United have got to punish Sheffield United. We can't afford to drop points here. It's three points and that's it. So United have got to find a way to win here. United needs to try and maintain that energy. We will get tired towards the end of this game. We need fresh legs. We'll definitely need to try and just really dig deep in this game. Show the resilience in this game against Sheffield. We have to play well from minute 1 to minute 90. And we have to be concentrated at all times. Big game. We have to go in with our chests out and say, big game. Chance for three points. Can do the double on this Sheffield United team. Have to stay mentally switched on at all times. And let's get the job done on this Sheffield United team. A big week for Manchester United. Three points is up for grabs. We need the three points. And it's a must win for Manchester United. We've got to play with courage, intent, conviction, purpose. Got to turn up as well. Got to show the fight, the passion, the pride, play with the badge, play for the club. Show the team spirit, character, determination, commitment, desire, awareness, what rate and work ethic as well. Sheffield United are scoring 0.9 goals per game. Sheffield United are considering 2.7 goals per game. Sheffield United have won 3, drew 7 and they've lost 23. They've lost to Crystal Palace 1 0. Nottingham Forest 2 1. Man City 2 1. Tottenham 2. Newcastle 8 0. West Ham 2 1. Fulham 3 1. Man United 2 1. Arsenal 5 0. Bournemouth 3 1. Burnley 5 0. Liverpool 2 0. Chelsea 2 0. Luton Town 3 2. Man City 2 0. Palace 3 2. Villa 5 0. Brighton 5 0. Wolves 1 0. Arsenal 6 0. Liverpool 3 1. Brentford 2 0. And Burnley 4 1. And you can tell that they're defensively vulnerable. So let's go and get at these as well. Sheffield United have played 33 games, won 3, drawn 7, and they've lost 23. And they've lost 12 games away from home this season. The place to look out for is Gerpick, Trusty, and Robinson's a doubt, Bogle. Lewitt, Chi, Curtis, Holgate, Hammer, Norwood, Sousa, Osborne, Abalister, Ben Slamine, McAtee, Brooks, Brewster's a doubt, McBurney, Archer, Brennan Diaz, Azula. Hope you guys are enjoying another video. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe to my channel if you are new, and I'll see you guys in the video in the next couple of days. And peace. <laughs>